So in this video I would like to talk a little bit about my flickering LED light that I whipped together quick and dirty for Halloween. Um, it basically consists only of four parts. Uh, batteries, uh, four AAA batteries. I select those that uh, aren't usable for other purposes anymore um, because they are too weak and I uh, tend to keep those uh, for purposes like this uh, which is very low power. Uh, it's an AT Tiny 13 microcontroller um, with a very minimal program and a 8mm uh, LED that is ultra bright red and a 680 ohms resistor. So that's pretty much it and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, linear congruential uh, generator that I use for the pseudo random flickering function. So the principle of operation is that we have an 8-bit uh, pseudo-random generator, a linear congruential generator inside the microcontroller and it continues to generate uh, random numbers and if the random number, which is between 0 and 255, so 8-bit, uh, is below a certain threshold, it turns off the LED for I think 100 milliseconds and it's above, it turns it on for 100 milliseconds and this goes on and on forever. And since I use a linear congruential generator uh, with a maximum period, which means it generates all 256 combinations after each other, I uh, can vary the amount of flickering by uh, changing the threshold. To explain the program better, I think it's best if we jump right in. You'll see that it's really simple and it pretty much does only one thing. It goes into an infinite loop here and generates pseudo-random numbers all the time. And then it checks if this pseudo-random number that it has generated is um, above or below the threshold of 50. And if it's above 50, which will be uh, true uh, about four-fifths of the time, then it will turn the light on. Otherwise, it will turn it off and then it'll just sleep for 50 milliseconds. Now, the interesting thing is the linear congruential generator up here. You'll see that that is also extremely simple. It has an internal state of 8-bit and the only thing that it does is that it multiplies the internal state by 5 and then adds 129. These two, uh, these two numbers, 5 and 129, are called the coefficients of the LCG. Um, there is always a multiplier, which is 5 in my case, and there's always an increment, which is 129 in my case. And there's also a modulo operation, which is uh, the remainder of integer division. This is implicit here. You'll notice that the multiplication is extended to a 16-bit integer or int uh, as by the C standard. But the result will be stored back in that state, which is only an 8-bit integer. So therefore, we'll have truncation and we'll only have the uh, least significant 8 bits stored in the state variable. Note that not all coefficients a and c will generate a periodicity of 256. In fact, most of those won't. And to get one that does, uh, either you'll have to, to do a bit of math or you look up some constants or you do it like I did and just brute force constants. There are multiple combinations of these coefficients that generate the full periodicity of the LCG but um, I chose this one specifically because uh, multiplication by 5 is uh, very efficiently doable in uh, assembly on a microcontroller because it will, uh, by the compiler, be replaced by a multiplication by 4, which is basically just a shift left by 2 bits, and a simple addition. So if we do a multiplication by 5, we won't have to worry that uh, all the um, uh, multiplication lips will be pulled in because this ATtiny13 does not have a hardware multiplier. 